25 minutes before 11 o'clock. Joe Reichel is here from Damage Control Services, and he will answer your questions about that do-it-yourself home repair project that you are going to do this coming weekend. Give you ideas on what tools you might need, what other products you might need, and uh, of course, if you can't do it yourself and you need a professional, Joe will help you figure out where to go for that as well. And the number to call Joe during the course of this show is 622-9622, 622-WOCA. We invite you to call. Good morning, Joe. Good morning. How you doing? I am doing wonderful. Good. We had a question this morning for you. I'm ready. All right. This was a call from somebody who wanted us to ask you if you have any tips on putting in cabinets. And we were trying to guess what your tips would be, and I thought, have a friend help, because it seems like a big job for one person. Well, you definitely want to get help, because uh, I'm, I'm assuming we're installing the upper cabinets. These are the ones that, that go above the countertop That's on what the I wall. That's too, yeah. Uh, or they could be the lower ones. So either way, I mean, you're, these are, are heavy and, and awkward, uh, assuming that you're starting with a blank kitchen, because if you're starting... You know, if you've already got a kitchen in, in that's already installed and you're ready to go from there, you've got to, to take everything apart, uh, which means unhooking all the plumbing and getting the electrical, if there's any electrical in the uh, in running through the cabinets or sometimes even the, the breaker boxes are in the back of the splash or something like that. Not the breaker box, the outlet boxes, the outlets. So really depends on the situation, but, you know, you've got to, you know, if that's the case, you got to turn your water off, make sure that the the um, the valves are off. Uh, if you have the shutoff valves, uh -huh. which hopefully you do, and be very careful pulling those out and, and around that. Make sure you turn the breakers off if you're working with the electrical or, or whatnot. But uh, these boxes uh, can be very heavy and awkward, and, and typically they're, you know, you've got to lift them and maneuver them in certain ways in order to get them in shape, in into place. So... Uh, very careful as far as back injuries or or you know twisting and turning which would be a back injury or even just pulling a muscle so be careful and get a friend that'd be the one uh, the tools that you'd need to have for something like that uh, one thing that, that people often uh, overlook are shims uh, this is oh, you know, just okay. a, a small wood shim or plastic shim and these are to make sure that everything is sitting uh, level and and everything's good to go okay so you know you can use them on the floor or on the back if the, the wall isn't uh, perfectly plumb or whatnot so and, and how do you level just with a level you'd use a level uh, typically you'd want to use one that would cover the whole cabinet so or the count the, the box the cabinet box if you're you're wanting to do so probably a, a three foot or minimum of a two foot level or four foot level I mean four or two foot level minimum two but you know that would give you a, a large enough span and you could right, right. make sure that they were sitting level and and plumb and so good if to go. if there's enough room to have it not flush with the ceiling do you go i mean do you push it up that far anyway or i'm trying, no, I'm trying typically to cabinets never go clear to the ceiling so there's always a space between the ceiling and the top of the cabinet yes okay unless you i mean there are special cabinet boxes that are, are made that way to go clear the ceiling but typically that's a, a wasted space and you'll have a, a gap up there and you'll put a trim piece that'll you know make it like a crown molding right at right. the top of the cabinet will make it look pretty yeah and, and i've seen some people with enough space between the cabinets and the ceiling to put flower pots and mm -hmm. yep they put the fancy thing. little yeah yeah dishes up there and hmm. things like that so. and, and, and this is not his question this is mine how, okay. how do you anchor it how do you because well, you need to find where your studs are in the wall and those that's the point where you'll want to screw into uh, screw the cabinets into the wall so, no, so just a normal screw is holding it up typically yeah really. I mean these are you'll be using at least a two inch screw they'll go through the cabinet and into the wall enough to bite uh, but you'll want to shim those areas because that will hold, you know, that you're creating a, a solid area there. And if, if you don't, a lot of times when you <clears throat> when you screw into the wall, it'll pull the cabinet. So ah, okay. you might need to, to do a little extra shimming here and there. If you have a question for Joe, whether you are the 
fellow who called this morning with the question for Joe. I know you said we, you wanted us to ask, so hopefully I, we, we, I asked it correctly. Um, and if I didn't cover it, feel free to call yeah, me I'm trying, or, or I'm trying call, to think what call you, the radio show if I didn't cover it. What you could have missed. But anyway, the number is 622-9622. We'd love to hear your calls. And it doesn't have to be that one. It can be any question about home repairs. One of the things that, that and this isn't really home repairs, but I've uh, been talking a lot about is lighting. Uh, outdoor lighting, uh, as far as for safety, and even indoor lighting. Uh, you know, if you're getting home after dark, uh, we're getting you're know, getting close to the time we're going to be changing the clocks ahead, right, and right, we'll be getting home. Today's after the last dark. day of summer, by the way. It is. Tomorrow starts first day of fall. Yeah. Fall is in the air. So <laughs> much cooler. Maybe that's why Dan McCall was just leaving the mall. He was getting some getting some warm clothes. Ah, okay. I walk by. <laughs> he said he was going to be listening, so I gave him a little shout out there. Uh, but um, uh, where was I going? Oh, we were talking about lighting. Getting home and it's after dark, you can easily get uh, timers to install on your lamps uh, so that a light will come on and you'll be able to, to have light at the house when you come home at night. And also uh, outdoor sensors uh, for your uh, floodlights and whatnot around the house, outside porch lights. So... You know, if they're not set on a timer, which you could have them set to come on certain times as well, but even when someone just walks up, the light would come on and and that give you that extra bit of safety, so and security. And this is this is for two things. First of all, it's for you knowing uh, where you're walking or someone coming up to your house, they'd be able to to find your sidewalk and the door safely. But also, um, a homeowner that I was talking to not not long ago slipped and fell on their sidewalk oh, wow. and um you know and it was it fortunately it was during the daytime but uh they ended up you know falling down because of uh the sidewalk conditions there was some uh, it was wet and 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 whatnot so always making sure that your property is in you know in good shape and as far as you know if you've got uh, this time of the year a lot of uh, mildew you know, grows on the sidewalks. That algae will get real slippery, especially when it gets wet. So, might want to get the sidewalks pressure washed and and whatnot. If you have that green slime growing on your sidewalk, can, can you can you fix a cosmetic problem? Like, in, uh, this is a carpet question. Carpet, okay. Yeah, can you fix a like? Let's say the uh, the dog messed on the carpet, and everything you do. It's still there. Is there. Can you cut that out and put a, a patch in it? Or is that well, I wouldn't necessarily cut the carpet out because of a dog mess that's still there because there's a lot of things that um, can be done in order to clean that up. Uh -huh. But let's just pretend the dog didn't mess and the dog chewed up the carpet. Chewed it. Okay. It's a worse, worse than I Worse just... situation. Uh, you know, so here, or just, you know, maybe you spilled something and Uncle changed, Charlie dropped a cigarette that kind of or thing? a cigarette or it, <laughs> it uh, changed the the coloring or something uh, by you using chemicals that you weren't uh, sure what it was or, or whatnot uh, as far as trying to clean it up yes carpet can typically carpet can be uh, patched it depends on the carpet though depends where it's at and and where patterns you know so that's why a lot of times if you have carpet installed it's a good idea to have a uh, to save a piece of the leftover of the remnant of it so right, that you right. have that in case. But, you know, let's just say you have a wear pattern and it happened in, you know, where the most traffic is. Now you're putting a new piece in that area and it's going to stand out. You're going to probably see it. Absolutely. In fact, I think that's what when Penn Flooring put in this carpet, mm -hmm. I believe all those little stretches that you see out there are the extra carpeting in case mm -hmm. we needed them. So Yeah. And that's where, you know, it's always good to have those. And, and a lot of times people use them anyway uh, for rugs and whatnot. So, you know, the the nowadays people are so, you know, the, the technology is so great. Pretty much there's no mess that's going to be able to, be made in a house unless you're really really terrible but you know typically most things can be cleaned up did you hear us talking about you at the last interview i did not i was here for that too well, yeah well at the Must beginning of it oh, okay. I, I brought up the fact that you had uh, at one time when hurricane season was starting you had given us advice to keep a, a handy bag of, of things you might need if you had right. to leave in a hurry and that's what she was talking about she was talking about september being national preparedness month 
and to be prepared for, for any kinds of disasters like that. Yep. Yeah. A lot of times people aren't prepared, and that's, you know, then I've often said it on here, prepared people <laughs> recover faster. So the more prepared you are for a disaster, the more likely you're going to be able to um, recover. You're going to be able to, to make it through. And it looks like we're at that point where we need to take a little break. So we'll be break right time. back. If you have a question for Joe or you want to make a comment on anything that we have said, the phone number is 622-9622. We'll be right back. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. So it'll be partly sunny today with a high of 85 to 89. Then partly cloudy tonight. There may be a shower in spots along the coast below 70 to 74. For tomorrow, times of clouds and sun with a passing thunderstorm in the afternoon, high 85 to 87. On Thursday, times of clouds and sun with a shower or thunderstorm, high 84 to 88. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. If you're anything like I was, the thought of getting older was the last thing on your mind. But here we are. For me, it started slowly. The lack of energy never being in the mood. And when I was, I could never perform at my best. I tried the pills and other treatments with minimal results and all but given up on my sex life. Then I found the doctors at New Mayo Medical Center. Wow, they made a new male out of me. Feel like I'm 25 again. I have renewed vigor, so much more energy and no longer worry about my performance. New Mayo treated me like my situation was one of a kind. With a custom treatment plan that really works, I feel great. They can create one for you too. It does not matter if you suffer from low testosterone, erectile dysfunction, or just want to last longer. New Mail will help you. Call New Mail Medical Center today at 352-404-4779. 352-404-4779. That's 352-404-4779. It will change your life. 352-404-4779. Here's what you may have missed on the John Tesh Radio Show. A 10 to 20 minute nap pays off the most any longer and your body falls into deep stages of sleep making you groggy when you wake up. Take Sam's Club for example. They're so confident that drones will be the hot holiday gift that they're stocking a dozen different kinds from basic models to ones that come equipped with high res cameras or the ability to pick up small objects. Things we watch on TV can absolutely directly impact our mood. Intelligence for your life on the John Tesh Radio Show. Don't miss this stuff. Stay informed on everything going on in the villages with the Village Spectator newspaper. The Village Spectator is exclusively devoted to the villages with news, commentary, and more. And yes, they have Tom's Picks, a free referral for people who are looking for a company to do work for them. Tom's Picks will refer the company that fits your needs, and all we ask is that you tell them where you heard about them. Call Tom's Picks at 804-1223 and pick up your copy of the Village Spectator today. Now read Ocala Downtown Newspaper Online. Hi, I'm Seth with AA Lock, Dock, and Security. Have you ever thought about the locks or security on your house or business? Have you ever wondered why the keys to your new car cost so much? Well, at AA Lock, Dock, and Security, we can help with securing your valuables. We can even replace those expensive transponder keys. We can give you the knowledge that no one else will. Call AA Lock, Dock, and Security at 867-1965. That's 867-1965. It is 12 minutes before 11 o'clock. Joe Reichel is here from Damage Control Services, and he's here to answer your questions about whatever it is you're trying to fix in your home. And uh, the number to call Joe is 622-9622. That's right now. But if you want to call Joe when he's not here on the air, what's your number? My phone number, direct line 352-817-6574. That's my cell, and I'll answer it all the time. So the, going back to the question about the cabinets, okay. it's kind of the same question I would have about hanging anything for fear that what, wherever I hung it might pull like a, a, a ceiling fan, for example. I mean, you really have to know what you're doing, right, to anchor something. Like even a hanging plant, I'd be worried it would pull something through. Right? Hanging a plant? You know the hanging plant, a plant hanger? Right. Outside? No, like inside. You know how you have those? Is that something okay. from the past? Okay, I, I got you. People I got don't you. do that anymore? Well, yeah, <laughs> not really. Not inside. Uh, typically, you really need to make sure you know where those uh, the trusses are so that you're going right into a truss if you're uh -huh. going to be hanging something or, or, you know, most of the time your lights, fixtures, they've got something up there that are, you know, they're fastened, but you can't just hang a, a ceiling fan from just any light up there. You need to make sure that you have that uh, anchored up there and it's, you know, secure. So 
uh, having that outlet fastened into a two by four or I something. I mean, you really need to know what you're doing. Plus, with, with a ceiling fan, you have to have the wiring up there. Well, most of the time, your ceiling fan is going to be attaching where you have a light fixture already. If you're going to be putting a ceiling, oh, that would make I'm talking sense. about an existing house. That would make sense. Yeah. So. So you never heard of a hanging plant, huh? Uh, not inside. A lot, well, and here again, a lot of times out on porches and whatnot, people do Outside, put, yeah, yeah. put, you know, put those hooks up there in order well, to see, hang I a re- plant. Here's so. what I, I can remember this. So I'm, I'm guessing it's like an old thing, but I can remember, oh gosh, it was like a butterfly thing, and you pushed it through a little hole in the mm-hmm. in the ceiling, and it was only holding on to the plasterboard or whatever the ceiling mm-hmm. was made out of, and that's it. Those are called a molly, I think, or a, a drywall hanger. And it was but, hanging uh, down. Yeah, it was a that, little flower and, pot. And they're not designed to hold very much weight. So that's got to be a light yeah. flower pot. or Well, you, you don't want to hang much weight from them because it will just pull right right down through. I think so, so yeah. You know, and that's, there's a lot of different uh, anchors that are made for, you know, going directly into the wall or whatnot. So, uh, wh- however... You know, however you go. But whatever it is, you got to make sure that it's attached to something. I mean, a picture frame normally doesn't have to be worried about. It's well, and, and here again, they make a lot of those picture frames that uh, are drywall holders that the way they're designed, you can hang a significant amount of weight on that. And looks like you have a phone call. Good morning. You're on the air with Joe Reichel. Good morning. Yes. Uh, good morning, Joe and guys. See, uh, with a 10-year-old roof, I'm, I'm getting these long black streaks that come like near the chimney or on the north side of the roof. Yep. Is there any way that can be cleaned up uh, without using a power pressure? Well, you never want to use a uh, power washer on a roof. Uh, what you would want to use is a soft wash. Uh, and that's more of a, a lightweight. It doesn't have the, the full force behind it like a, uh, a pressure washer would have. Uh, there's different chemicals that they've got out there and a lot of them are designed for uh, roof and, and shingle cleaning. So you just have to find one like that and, and go from there. How, but, how would you apply that? Would you like put that in a, like a, a, a tank, you know, and then pump it up? And uh, pump up sprayers, spray? how, yeah, pump up sprayer a lot of times is how they use it. And uh, some of them, depending on uh, you know, in the situation, uh, I've seen a lot of people use a, uh, like a, a soft bristle uh, broom, a push broom, and yeah. that will, you know, in, in order to agitate that surface a little bit, you know, softly, like I said, soft bristle, uh, in order to work that uh, chemical into the shingle and then uh, wash it down from there. Do you think that chemical would go into the shingle and kind of prevent that from happening well a lot of times what they do have you know this this uh, shingle uh, washes that they've got out there they do have a milda side in them that keeps the you know keeps it from coming back quickly yeah my, my neighbor put on a new roof here about two years back and uh, he was saying that uh, they told him that uh, you're never going to have that problem because the uh, the shingle has something in it that prevents whatever it is, mold or whatever, from developing. Okay. Yeah, a lot of... Evidently, the new roofing roofing material now uh, uh, kind of takes care of that. Yeah, uh, the the newer products that they have out there have that stuff built into them uh, to help out. But, you know, still, uh, over over time, a lot of times these will... um, you know, you still end up with these spots, and you know, a lot of times it, you know, happens around, like you said, where the chimney is or the vent stack, and that's you know the um, vent stacks, things like that, or even under uh, trees. A lot of times, when you have trees, they'll, you know, get in those areas. So, yeah, it, it, it you know, if you got a nice look at home in a roof like that, it really is, uh, it's distracting, and it's, uh, you really want to do something about it, you know. Exactly. And it's always good okay, to, you know, take care of that stuff, too. And, you know, and it not only does it look bad, but, you know, that stuff will, will um, you know, it's it's just, it's unattractive. Exactly. Okay, thanks a lot. Joe. You're welcome. All You're right, welcome. thank you. Uh, if you would like to call Joe, the number is 622-9622. The uh, the mold that you were talking about before, if it's the, that little bit of mold that gets between the tiles and, and the... Um, in the bathroom, mm-hmm. uh, mildew. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Is that is that 
I mean, is that, could you use bleach there? Because I know you don't like bleach for those kind of things. Uh, bleach is not, it'll, it'll whiten it, but it's not going to fix it. A lot of times what happens when you get mold uh, or mildew growth that's coming out between the tiles, uh, moisture has gotten behind the tile, it's gotten into the grout, oh. and that's caused that to, you know, to that discoloration to come through there. So it'll take a little bit of, you know, a lot of times you have to remove that tile and start all over. Oh, wow. And you do have another phone call. Good morning. You're on the air with Joe. Uh, good morning. Good morning. I have a question while you're on the roof area. Okay. About pressure cleaning the soffit and fascia because they're usually white is uh, i've seen people using the pressure washer up in there but i isn't that bad to get that water sprayed up through the holes in the soffit well there's really uh not many other ways in order to get that uh cleaned out of there uh, i wouldn't recommend doing a doing a lot of spraying up in there because that will or spraying directly into it because it will uh, water will get up in there but you know you're out in the overhang of the house where you know you're going to be spraying it so as long as you're not you know and spraying it on an angle not spraying directly up in uh, you're not going to get much water up in there but there's unfortunately the way that vented soffit is there's not much else that you can do in order to to clean that because it does get dusty and cobwebs and you also end up with the those mud daubers that that uh, make nests up in there and whatnot so you know if you get on an angle and you spray it it you know kind of is a little bit easier but you never want to spray too much if that or makes that any of that makes if sense you, if you do it by hand with simple green and a, a rag and wash i know it takes a little time consuming yeah, it, it is a little time consuming, and, and here again, um, it, that probably ultimately would be the best way for your, um, you know, for the, the soffit, but, you know, you got to get a ladder up in there, you're working off of a ladder, working overhead, scrubbing all that, so, um, you know, you got to be very careful, in, you know, in doing that too, so, you know, and typically a lot of times people have a lot of shrubs and and whatnot, you know, landscaping up close to the house right. and around there. Right. So you're working in amongst that. And that's where, you know, a lot of times people just power wash or, you know, pressure wash it. Uh, and you don't want to have that, that, you know, pressure turned up real high, uh, just enough to knock down that stuff. But, you know, going through ahead of time and, and you know, running, a, using a broom to knock down the cobwebs or to get the first layer of the dust off is always, you know, that always works, works good too. All right. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. And, and if, you're gonna be, bye -bye. if you're going to be doing that, that project on your own, be very careful because you are going to be working on a ladder. So we've got a, a problem right here. You see the, the hornet's nest or whatever that is, yep. the wasp nest? Yep, you got a wasp nest coming in the corner, and that's around the window. And, you want, and a lot of times you have those around homes. And, you know, be very careful uh, taking care of those. A lot of times you want to do it at night. If you're going to spray that just nest with off. something or, or knock it down at night, yeah, but just be very careful. Yeah, and funny. don't do it if you're allergic to it. Thanks. Hello, ladies. Yeah, definitely don't do it. <laughs> and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, we're right. just about out of time. Was I'm it? right out of time. It says, well, my drywall note. is falling from the ceiling of my garage. Should I be worried about the roof leaking? If you have that happening... Uh, and there's water stains, yes, the roof is leaking. If the drywall is just falling, it's because it's, uh, uh, the, your garage is a lot hotter than the rest of your house and probably the tape joints are just coming loose and, and whatnot. So it really depends. Take a picture of it and show it, send it to me. You can send it to me. I can take a text or an email, joe at damageflorida.com, all spelled out, or you can text it to me, uh, 352-817. 6574. You send me a picture of your falling drywall ceiling and I can tell you what's wrong. Oh, wow. Wow. You're going to get a lot of pictures now from all kinds of problems. All kinds of problems. <laughs> yeah. That'd be fine. Uh, well, thank you, Joe. Always fun and uh, we learn something every single time. I hope so. Of course, those, those wasps aren't my responsibility. But <clears throat> no, that's the mall. But, but if you have a home and you have wasp nests, that is your responsibility. Sure is. Thank you, Joe. You're welcome. We'll be right back.
Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA.